Welcome everybody, it's Leslie from Sew A Lot Creative Sewing Centers, Centerville, Ohio and Lexington, Kentucky. I am coming to you with your monthly Kimberbell Club for 2022 step-by-step -step tutorial video. Make sure you stay tuned to get all the tips and tricks on the traditional project assigned for this month and then make sure to join in to our live Zoom class to get additional ideas and share your thoughts on what we can do with this project. Here we go. We are going to take our 120 by 120 hoop. If you don't have a hoop that's 120 by 120, you can use anything that's larger than that. We're gonna take it and we're going to prepare the stabilizer in the hoop to get ready to make the bunny ears. So I've already opened up my quick release and my thumb screw. I have a piece of light mesh cutaway stabilizer that I'm gonna lay in the hoop area, making sure to put the insert in right side up so that I can read the numbers or words just like they would be going on the hoop or, or on the machine, excuse me. We're gonna hoop that, lock in the quick release and then adjust that hoop screw to make sure everything's nice and tight and there. And then we're gonna attach this to the machine to get ready to embroider. Next on our machine, we're gonna have called up, we have two embroidery files with this design. We're gonna call up the ear file, so the two little bunny ears in the hoop. Place them in the hoop size that you have hooped your stabilizer in. So I have the 120 by 120 hoop. And then attach the hoop to the machine. The first stitch is going to be a placement stitch for the ears. Now you're going to stitch this in a probably a white or a light color so that you can still see it on the stabilizer, but that you can also make sure that it doesn't bleed through the little ears so that you don't have bright red thread showing through your pretty white ears. I'm gonna use a pink just so you guys can see it on the video. Now for this project, Part of the project, we're gonna have three five inch squares of your white fabric that is gonna be for your ears. Right now, I'm just gonna take one of those five inch squares, placing it right side up and making sure to cover all the placement areas. From here, we're gonna tack this down. Again, you're gonna be most likely matching your fabric color, your thread in your fabric color and using white on white. I'm just using pink for the video so you can see. Once you've tacked down that first layer of white fabric, it's going to do a fun decorative stitch all the way around the edge of this. Again, most likely you're going to be using white thread that matches along the edge. Again, I'm going to use pink for the video. We're going to take the other two five inch squares of white fabric and layer them face up, one on top of the other, right over the pretty ears that we've stitched on the stabilizer. I'm gonna use Kimberbell tape, tape these two layers of fabric to my stabilizer to keep them from shifting. And then we're gonna stitch a basting line around each ear as well as diagonal lines across that will create our chenille when we cut between them. From here, we're gonna remove the hoop from the machine and trim around the outside edge of the top two layers of fabric. So from here, I'm gonna remove the two layers of tape, or two pieces of tape. Take the top two layers of the white fabric and trim around the basting line. <laughs> Once you've trimmed around those top two layers, you're just gonna take your seam ripper and pop out the basting stitches along the edges. These are the same stitches you just used to trim out the shape of the ear. 
Remember, we're only taking away the basting stitches away from the edges, around the outside edges. We're not going into these diagonal stitches. Those are gonna stay put. Now that I have my basting stitches out, we're gonna create the chenille by trimming between these diagonal stitch lines, okay? You can do this with a pair of scissors by just making sure to only lift up the two layers of fabric and stitching from angle to angle all the way down. Or if you happen to have a chenille cutter, you can set it to the right width. Again, pick up those two layers and slice through those nice and easy. From here, we're just gonna take and rough up the edges that we stitched between or that we cut. You can use a chenille brush, a nail file, the end of your seam ripper, your nails. I've got one of these nice seam fix seam rippers that has the rubber tip end on it. It works well for this. It's a small project. And even if you if you take a chenille brush and you wet the chenille brush before you do it, that will help with some of these little flyaways you can catch later. Again, if you used white thread throughout the project, you're gonna have white chenille little ears and you're just really gonna see that chenilling focus there. We're gonna get that all out. And from here, we're gonna take our pink five inch square and we're gonna lay this right side down. So pretty sides together in place. Again, I'm just gonna tape this down to my stabilizer to make sure that it doesn't shift or move around because now you definitely have some bulk with those fluffy ears. And we're gonna take this back to the machine and we're gonna stitch down around the edge of the ears, leaving the bottoms open for us to be able to flip. So now that we're back to the machine, we've got the pink fabric layered on top, pretty side down. So we're looking at the back side. We're gonna go ahead and stitch the pieces that are gonna sew the back and the front of the ears together. Now this part of the embroidery is finished and we're gonna take this, we're gonna trim around and then we're gonna flip these ears right side out. So now that they're all stitched, we're going to loosen up our hoop screw, release the quick release, open up the hoop, set it aside. And from here, we're gonna trim out around our ears, around this shape. You're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch around the edges. And I'm just gonna cut my fabric off. Just cut my stabilizer off essentially at the bottom and set that aside, cut out my other ear. And from here, we're just going to take and snip a quarter of an inch so that when we turn these, we have nice rounded edges. You just want a pair of nice sharp scissors for this. I'm just using my Kimberbell micro tip scissors, making sure not to clip through piece that holds the piece, the front and back together. You don't want holes in your ears. From here, we're gonna turn these right side out. It definitely helps to have something that you can put down in there to pull that out. The Easy Point and Turner by Sue Avery or Suki Sews, as she's now <laughs> known as, is a great tool to be able to do this with. You can just take the rounded end, stick it into the ear between the white layer and the pink layer all the way to the end, and then flip this right over the edge. Yeah. If you've got a tube turner, um, that would be something that you could utilize too. This is just so nice because you can grip it and hold it. And then I can take this rounded point end, stick it back in here and poke out that curve all the way around. So then you have your ear. We're gonna do the same thing with the other one. And now you've got your pair of little ears that we're gonna sit aside and use in combination with our next souping. Now that we've finished the ears and have them set aside and ready to go, we're going to call up the next embroidery file, which is the circle and the face. We're going to get our fabric ready. You're going to have two green 
five inch squares, one white three and a half by four and a half inch rectangle, and you're gonna need two pieces of fusible backing, one piece five and a half by, or five by five, and one piece three and a half by four and a half. That fusible backing can be Kimberbell fusible backing, woven fusible, SF 101. We're just looking for a woven fusible backing that we can adhere to the back side of two of these pieces of fabric to create a little bit more stabilization on the green for our overall design. And on the white, it's gonna not only give us a little extra stabilization for the details, but it's also going to keep our green fabric from showing through our white when we layer them up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take those pieces of fabric with the fusible and we're gonna get those fused together. But in the meantime, we're also going to need a piece of lightweight tearaway stabilizer that we're gonna go ahead and hoop up. We're gonna use the same 120 by 120 hoop, put that in, tighten our hoop screw, and you can go ahead and click this onto the machine while you go to fuse your backing. So I've gone ahead and brought my two pieces of fabric, my one green background and my white that is gonna be the background for my bunny face over to my ironing board. I've got them layered up, the wrong side of the fabric layered with the shiny side of your fusible backing. And I'm just gonna press those with my iron or my heat press to adhere and activate the glue. Once those are adhered on, we can take these over to the machine and get ready to stitch. So the first step is gonna to be to stitch a placement stitch right on the stabilizer. Once we have our placement stitch, I'm just gonna take my green fabric that has the fusible backing on it and cover up that area, leaving an equal amount of excess around all four sides. You can use your Kimberbell tape and tape this in place to keep it from shifting. And then we're gonna tack this square down, or circle down. Now we're gonna stitch the placement stitch for the ears. It's gonna do one ear at a time. It's gonna stitch a placement line. And then we're gonna take, and on this placement stitch, we're gonna take one of our ear pieces that we had set aside. We're gonna lay it centered on that line. And then we're gonna stitch across that ear. Next, it's going to stitch the placement line for the other ear. And remember, when we're placing this ear, make sure to leave the excess over the line, centered on the line, and make sure that you put the chenille side down and leave your pink side up. Tape that in place, and then you can stitch. Once we have those stitched, I'm going to move this forward to my trim position, and I'm going to trim off that excess below the tack down line. Next, we're going to stitch the placement line for the face. We're going to use our white piece that's three and a half by four and a half with the fusible on the backing. And we're going to cover up that whole area and tack this down. Now I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine so that I can trim the white face out. Just makes it a little easier trimming around that almost circle and that keeping from avoiding cutting your ears off that you've just put on. So we're just gonna trim around, all the way around. And what's really important is to make sure that when you get to this part where the ears are, that you don't accidentally trim off those ears we've added on. So you wanna take this slow, make sure to lift up your white face fabric and keep those ears out of the way. And then you have your little bunny face. And then we're gonna take this back to the machine. We're gonna stitch out the eyes, the nose and the mouth and the whiskers. So next it's just gonna stitch the eyes and the whiskers. Once it finishes the whiskers, it's going to do the nose and mouth, so I'm going to put my pink back in. And from here, it's going to stitch the white edge along the top of our bunny head. Now that we've got our 
satin stitching all finished. The next step is going to be to create that finished edge for our circle. So we're gonna do that, but we need to get our rabbit ears out of the way. So we're gonna take these and you're gonna fold them down into the center and we're gonna tape them. You wanna make sure that they are inside of this original circle that you created and just taped out of the way. It's okay if the machine stitches over the tape at this point because you can always pull it away after. And then we're just going to stitch that outside finishing edge. You just wanna make sure that if that tape's coming up at all that it's not gonna get caught. Now our embroidery is finished. We're gonna take it out and trim it up and put it in the hoop. From here, I've just pulled away the tape and let the ears come back up. And I'm going to release my screw and quick release lever on my hoop, pulling away any tape that we may have still on the project. And then I'm just gonna tear the design away from the stabilizer. Next, I'm gonna take my extra piece of five inch square green and I'm gonna lay my five inch square on the back side. I'm gonna take my wooden hoop, loosen the screw, position this underneath, slide the outer hoop over my ears, fit the hoop on, pulling everything nice and tight. Once I have it positioned how I like it, I'm just gonna tighten down that screw and this is the only place where you're gonna see that edge stitching. So you may want to, when you're using it, use a matching color thread, um, but beyond that, you're not gonna see any of those stitches. So if that's something that's gonna affect you, I actually just kind of make sure mine's pulled back nice and tight. Even though my thread color is white, it's very not visible. And I actually put a little glue right in behind here and glue this down nice and tight so that you can't even see that. I'm just gonna tighten this up so that it can't be pulled out. And then we're gonna flip it over. Take your sharp scissors and just trim away the excess. From here, you could use hot glue, you could use liquid stitch. If you wanna put a little glue back inside of here, so I can keep that down nice and tight. Once I have that done, we're going to set up our ears so we can flap them over as to what makes us happy and position them. You can do this with glue. You can do this with needle and thread and hand tack it from the back. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use, I kind of fold them where I want them. Take my liquid stitch, do a little line press and hold, and then I'm just gonna come in behind here, same thing, add some liquid stitch to my background, get these glued where I want them, and then I'm just gonna turn it over flat on the table. I'll put something heavy on top of it, let it sit for 24 hours, it'll be fully set, or it really doesn't even take quite that long to get it, but just leave it sit for a couple hours, let it go, and you will have your cute little bunny hoop all ready for any kind of decoration. So I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial video on Kimberbell's January 2022 Kimberbell Club project, um, digital dealer exclusive, project number one, bunny in the hoop. Can't wait to share all the additional ideas and fun tips and tricks in our monthly Zoom class. Make sure you tune in.